In this video, we're going to discuss the photoelectric effect. Now, this is another one of those examples of a classical mechanics failure that required a new physical model in order to understand uh, what was being observed, observed experimentally. Now, this uh, physical problem was solved around the early 1900s by Albert Einstein. And a lot of people uh, actually think that Albert Einstein won the Nobel Prize for his discovery of special rel relativity, the E equals MC squared equation. But actually, it was solving this physical problem that earned Albert Einstein the Nobel Prize um, for this discovery in the early 1900s. So let's go over the physical problem and what was wrong with classical mechanics and how he was able to fix it with his model. So the photoelectric effect is the phenomena where you shine light on a metal surface, right? So what I have here, are these red squigglies, this is uh, incoming electromagnetic radiation, some form of light, right? Um, and this is a metal surface that's rich with electrons, right? Uh, as the light comes in, what can be observed is that if you come in with the right type of light, then uh, you can actually eject electrons from that metal surface. That ejected electron is known as a photo electron, right? It's been um, excited by the light and is now liberated from the surface of the metal with all of the energy given to it by the electromagnetic radiation, right? So this was, this was observed in the 1800s, um, but the physical models were unable to explain what was noted from the photoelectric effect. So what do I mean here? So here I have a couple of plots. On the left-hand side here, um, we have what's ex what was expected from classical mechanics, and on the right-hand side, we have what was observed. On this first plot in the top left, this is the kinetic energy plotted with respect to the intensity of the radiation, right? And the intensity of the radiation is proportional, from classical mechanics, is proportional to the amplitude of the wave or the intensity of the light, right? So basically saying that it doesn't matter what a uh, portion of the electromagnetic spectrum you're at, you can increase the energy of electromagnetic radiation by increasing the brightness of the light, right? The amplitude of the light. So from classical mechanics, what they expected to happen is that you would eject more photoelectrons, eject faster photoelectrons if you came in with more intense radiation, right? So rather than changing the frequency of the light, you change the intensity of the light and you'll produce faster, more energetic photoelectrons that way. Um, and, and they believe that the kinetic energy, moving to this plot, the kinetic energy would have no dependence on the frequency. So whether you came in with blue light or red light, it wouldn't matter as long as the intensity was high enough to liberate the electrons. But that's not what was observed experimentally. What was observed experimentally is that if you come in with a per certain color or frequency of light, right? If there are no photoelectrons uh, liberated, it wouldn't matter how high you crank up the intensity of that radiation, the, there wouldn't be any photoelectrons ejected, right? So there would just be no dependence on intensity. That's what was observed experimentally. And they noted a great dependence with frequency, that it depended on coming in with the right frequency of light um, that determined how, how, um, how energetic your photoelectrons were rather than having this observation um, with intensity, right? So basically they got exactly the opposite of the result that they were expecting from classical mechanics. So how did Albert Einstein make sense of this? Well, what he did was envision um, that the electromagnetic radiation is made up of a stream of particles called photons. Right. So photons are just a stream of particles that uh, compose electromagnetic radiation. Right. So um, so kind of sticking with what we had with Planck's law in the previous video, the, uh, each photon will have an individual energy. Right. So the energy of a photon. Would be equal to H nu where nu is the frequency, right? So kind of taking from uh, a cue from this experiment that there is a dependence of the energy on the frequency, uh, Albert Einstein put forward that the energy of a photon would depend 
on the frequency of the radiation and not the intensity. And obviously this H is the same Planck's constant that we looked at in the previous video. Now, obviously we can re-express this in terms of the wavelength of radiation by plugging in a definition of the frequency, right? As C over Lambda. And so that gives us um, this energy of the photon that is not dependent on intensity, is dependent on the frequency or wavelength of the radiation. Now, um, to, to add some more weight to this, uh, Einstein married this idea with his theory of special relativity, right? So his uh, special relativity theory is that E is equal to MC squared, right? So basically anything uh, with energy, right, has this mass proportional to the square of the speed of light, right? So what we can do here um, is use E equals MC squared to uh, isolate the mass, right? So we have mass is equal to E over C squared. And so a photon is just like anything else that produces energy. So we can actually plug in the energy of the photon here, right? So we have the energy of the photon over C squared and then plug in our definition for the energy of the photon, right? So we could have HC over lambda over C squared. Right. So one of our um, speed of light constants here will cancel out with the one in the denominator. Right. So we get that one cancel. Right. So we end up with the following final expression where we have the mass is going to be equal to Planck's constant over the wavelength times the speed of light. Right. So this is the mass of a photon. Right. So here again, we see this um, and explicitly we really see this duality of wave and particle um, behavior. Right. Just like we saw with the UV catastrophe where, you know, Im implementing some of the insight from particle uh, from particle mechanics helped figure out wave behavior. We see the same thing here. Right. This is purely a phenomenon of light. Right. But envisioning it. In a, in a way that includes some of the properties of particles helps to understand what goes on experimentally. So introducing this idea of the photon, right? The idea of, um, of light being composed of small particles that have their energy depend on frequency helped figure out what was going on here with the photoelectric effect, why it has its energy dependence on frequency rather than the intensity of radiation. So Basically, we go through all of these examples of failures of classical mechanics to set up this idea that the wave properties of particles are important. When you get down to this small level where you're looking at these really small electrons traveling at large speeds, you really have to include the wave property of matter as well. And that's going to dictate going forward how we actually handle the properties of electrons. We have to consider their wave-like properties.